So, Ken, you, you never actually told me what we're, we're doing today, so uh, <sighs> what's, what's it going to be? Yeah, I'm getting psyched up for this right now. Uh, I know you're going to love this one, Jason. It's, it's a classic. Okay. Today on Two Guys with Some Cardboard, we're looking at... Monopoly. So apparently we're playing Monopoly today. Yeah, this season Jason's kind of thrown a few uh, curveballs at me, so I figured I'd throw a few curveballs back at him. I figured that, uh, you know, Monopoly's a classic friendly game, and everyone loves it. Universally enjoyed by all. Alright, so Monopoly may not necessarily be this giant work of art or anything, but it actually has a fairly extensive history where, uh, I mean, if you look up just a little bit about it, it's got a lot going on in there. Um, did you want to just take a nap? Maybe I, yeah, I will. Alright. <laughs> there, there. Oh, okay, fine. Um, Monopoly can actually be traced all the way back to the early 1900s, uh, about a couple years into 1903 or four or something like that. Uh, it was actually originally created by a, an Elizabeth Maggie... I think was the name. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, so she originally created this game to actually show the negative effects of... Um, uh, well, actually, to, to help teach um, how taxing systems worked and to show the negative effects of actually using um, uh, monopolies to control like uh, housing arrangements in certain areas and such, which is actually really cool. She eventually did publish the game technically, I think, in the 30s? Uh, and then it's gone through tons of different incarnations since then. I guess in the 70s, it was actually uh, um, opted that day. Uh, Charles Darrow was actually the creator. Uh, and that was the popular uh, understanding of the game for quite a while by many people. But uh, it's actually not true. Yeah, extensive history. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know you're not looking forward to this, but Monopoly is kind of like... Um, it's kind of like that like black sheep in the family that no one really wants to talk to, but we all know was necessary for the... And we have a lot to, to owing to uh, for the cur current state of board games today. If not just for the fact that we don't want to play Monopoly anymore, we want games that are more fun than that. Just think about it. If we didn't have Monopoly, we wouldn't be able to make so many more jokes about it in Power Grid. Well, Jason seems completely pumped for this, so without further ado, let's get into the game. First of all, we'll go over the components for Monopoly. This is the game board. These are the player bits. These are the houses and hotels. These are the community and chance cards. These are the dice. This is the money. These are the deeds. And this is the banker organization-y thingy. Now on to setup. So to set up this classic game of intrigue and buying and selling, first place the board in the center of the table, set up the banker organization tray. Now you Monopoly pros at home may actually have it set up that uh, your bank organizational thingy actually already has the money all in it, but uh, with this copy uh, it's been banged around a lot, so preemptively it's the money's just been safely tucked away into a little plastic bag, so we have to put this out each time. But again, since you guys at home are total pros and would never do that to your game, this this part of the setup may not necessarily be necessary for you. But regardless, spend a little while shoving the money back into the old tray thing. Next, you should probably determine who's going to take the prestigious role of banker, as this is very, very, very important. So we're going to have a, a game of rock, paper, scissors to see who's going to be the banker, and the loser is going to end up being the banker. Uh, uh, yeah, loser. So Jason is stuck with the role of, uh, or I mean, uh, gets the privilege of the role of banker. So I'm just going to put the 
money over by you, Jason. Place the chance and community chest uh, cards onto their respective locations. Of course you want to make sure to shuffle these first. Make sure to take your neatly piled uh, thing of deeds and start shuffling them up. No! Oh, oh, really? I wasn't supposed to? Okay. I will kill you. I'm just trying to make this go as long as we can, Jason. Anyway, the deeds can also go to the banker. They fit nicely in the spot that usually holds the 20s. Take your uh, house and hotel pieces. Uh, yeah, and uh, just put them on the board, I guess. Anywhere will do. It's not really a particular place they gotta go or anything. Make sure your dice are sufficiently rolled before placing them on the table. Now we select our character pawn. Uh, obviously, since this is Star Wars Monopoly, every single one of these characters has very specific abilities, uh, pros, cons, and all that jazz. Right, Jason? I will kill you so dead. What? You know, it doesn't It doesn't work like that? No. Well, I'll go fish out the character cards, and you can figure out which pawn you want to play. Oh, I'm playing Darth Vader. Oh, you're going to be Darth Vader, are you? Mm-hmm. Very well, then. I will be the Luke Skywalker to your Darth Vader. Place your starting pieces on go. Return the rest of the poor little pawns to their bag. So, to start off, we have to give out $1,500 to every player. So, I'm going to take this. And, uh, Jason, you can take yours. Uh, no. No, you sure? Yeah, there, there is a very specific amount of each number denomination of bill that you have to give. Oh, this is totally fine. We'll just make change later. You're the banker. You can handle it. All right, fine, fine, fine. Uh, each player is given $1,500 uh, as by as follows. Two 500s, two 100s, two 50s, six 20s, five 10s, five fives, and five ones. Now we figure out who goes first. Uh, so starting with the banker, so I guess I'm not allowed to roll during this point in time, uh, each player rolls a die and the one with the highest result is the one who goes first. Jason rolls a one. Uh, it's going to be hard to beat this, but luckily Luke has a bonus to die rolls. Which unfortunately did not come up in this roll. I think All we're right. using the wrong dice. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm the dark side. Oh yeah, you are the dark side. That's why it's not working. Okay, well you go roll first. <laughs> See? There we go. Flip over all these cards like a little silly man. Alright. All right. Yep. Well, it looks like the dark side was uh, strong in this one, so it's time for Jason to go first. <clears throat> so since Jason is playing the dark side, I'm going to get hit with all the uh, dark side pieces, and uh, since I'm playing the light side, I'm going to take all the light side pieces. Alright. Now we go on to the equipment phase. I will kill you. Alright, fine. Now you're ready to play. Alright, so... Monopoly. Well, it's not really too much to this game, so this should be quick. I bet you never thought that we would get to this point, Jason, where we actually get to explain the rules of Monopoly. Oh, I know. They're so complex and I bet this nuanced. Is, this has probably kept you up at night, just, just thinking about the delicious Monopoly you're going to Shut play. up so I can do this. But I'm just trying to help. You're not helping. All right, so basically, during your turn, there are, well, I guess you could call them two phases. But essentially what you do is, first of all, you roll the two dice. You add the values together. So in this case, I've rolled a six. And you move that many spaces. So one, two, three, four, five, six. After that, something happens depending on what space you've landed on. So just going over the a lot of the basic spaces here. First of all, if you land on a property, and that's one of the ones with the, uh, the colored bits on the top, then uh, one of two things can happen. If nobody else owns that uh, particular property, then you can pay the price that is listed, in this case 100 Star Wars bucks or whatever they are, to, uh, to purchase, purchase that property, in which case you get the deed. Now, if you should land on this, nobody owns it, and you choose not to purchase it, then you actually have to auction that property off. Now, a lot of people don't play with the, this rule, and a lot of people think that it's a house rule that some people play by. It is not. This is actually in the Monopoly rules. So if you choose to not buy it and you just don't get the deed, that is a house rule. Now, the on the other hand, should you land on a space that somebody else owns, then you're going to have to pay the money for the privilege of being there, basically. 
So at the top of each card, of each deed card, there will be a, an amount listed for rent. That is how much you have to pay the person if you land on that space. There's going to be a few other uh, rent values listed here as well, and that's how much you have to pay with the listed number of cities or spaceports, which are pretty much analogous to houses and hotels in the uh, normal version. Now, in addition to properties, there are a few other spaces that I should uh, probably mention. Most of them are pretty, you know, simple to figure out, but uh, just in case you can't for some reason. First of all, there are going to be spaces that look exactly like the cards on the, uh, the board here. So uh, these are, again, analogous to Community Chest and Chance from the original game. So I'm curious, Jason, which one of these is Community Chest and which one of these is uh, Chance? So the Rebel cards are actually the Community Chest cards, and the Imperial cards are the Chance cards. That makes sense that the Rebels would be the Community Chest cards, those damn communists. So if you land on one of those spaces, you have to draw the requisite card and do what it says. Pretty simple. So in the original game, there are actually going to be railroads at the center on each side. Uh, they're basically just properties, except they, the rent goes up with the uh, number of, of those properties that you actually own. And you actually can't build uh, hotels or uh, houses on them. There are also the utilities here. Uh, I I think it's the waterworks and the power plant in the original version, or something like that. It is, yeah. Uh, anyway, regardless, if uh, if you own one of those utilities and somebody else lands there, then the rent is four times the amount shown on the dice. And if you own both, then it's ten times the amount shown on the dice. So it can get uh, pretty pricey. And naturally, if you land on the reactor core and or power plant, you actually have to then start a game of power grid to resolve the effects. Stop it. Just stop it right there. None of that. All right, moving on to the other special spaces. Uh, first of all, there is Go. Whenever you actually pass the Go space, you collect $200. And this happens every time that you go all the way around the board. So, you know, at least you always get some income coming in. Over here is the Go to Jail space. Uh, and there are a few Go to Jail cards in the, the cards here. If you hit this space, you go immediately to the jail space over here, in the in-jail section. Um, and we'll talk about that in, in a little bit, but there are numerous ways to be sent to jail. There's also the Just Visiting section, so if you should happen to land on this space, then you just go into the Just Visiting section. You don't get thrown in jail just because you happen to be there. Finally, there's the free parking space. Now, again, this is something that people commonly have house rules for. Uh, in some cases, I know people have a certain amount that they, you know, that you get whenever you land on the free parking space or, you know, a uh, like a pool uh, builds up until somebody lands on it. There's various different rules. In reality, in the basic rules, this is just a space where nothing happens. Nothing happens. There is no rule that says anything happens there. So as I mentioned before, uh, you can actually build houses and hotels on the various places that you own. Uh, well, in this case, it's cities and spaceports, but it's pretty much the same thing. Now, now, first of all, you can't just build these on any spot you want. First of all, you have to own the entire uh, series. So if you want to build on any of the purple ones, you have to own, own all of the purple ones. The cost for building a, uh, a house or a hotel is actually listed on the card, so it, it's different for each property. Uh, in addition, it should be noted that you actually have to build evenly. So you can't simply build four houses on one, uh, one of the spots and build no houses on the others. You have to have one on each before you can build the second one on any of them, and so on. And when you actually build a hotel, you change in the, uh, the four houses. So you have to have four houses first. It should also be mentioned that houses are a limited resource. So in the event that you want to build, build a house and uh, there aren't any houses left, well, you can't. You have to wait until somebody changes them in. In addition, uh, if you actually are low on funds for some reason, you can choose to sell your hotels or houses uh, whenever you want, and you basically get half of whatever you originally paid for them. 
Now, if at any time you should be out of actual cash and you need to pay something, you can't just not pay it. So you may have to mortgage some of your property properties. So each, uh, each property will have a mortgage value listed. So you can pretty much choose which ones you want to mortgage. It's, you know, it depends on your strategy ultimately. But uh, if you choose to mortgage a property, then you get that amount of money from the bank immediately and you flip over the card. As long as the property is mortgaged, as long as it's flipped over, nobody has to pay rent when they're stepping on that space. Once a property is mortgaged, you can actually unmortgage it by playing, paying back the amount of the mortgage plus 10% interest. So then you would get to flip it back over and people would have to pay rent and stuff again. So next I just want to go over uh, how jail works. Um, so as I mentioned, you can go to jail by hitting the go to jail space. You can go to jail by getting a go to jail card from one of the two decks. Or, and this is another thing that people often forget, uh, when you roll doubles while you're moving, uh, you actually get to move that many spaces, resolve whatever it is you land on, and move again. So you get to roll the double dice again. However, if you get doubles three times in a row, you go to jail immediately. It's called speeding. Alright, so if you're in jail, there are a few different ways of getting out. So first of all, for the next three turns after you have actually gotten into jail, you can choose to roll the dice. And if you should get doubles, then you actually get out of jail. And you move to the just visiting section. There are a few get out of jail free cards that you can utilize to get out of jail immediately. You can actually choose to purchase a get out of jail free card from another player at any time if you want. And you can also choose to pay a fine of $50 in order to get out. It should be noted that if you choose to roll the dice and you roll three times and do not get doubles, then you must pay the $50 fine. And it should also be mentioned, because a lot of people are a little uh, iffy on this, when you're in jail, you can still buy and sell properties or do whatever you want as you wish. It's, it just basically means that you can't move until you get out of jail. Now another thing that people often overlook and, uh, and don't really know about this game is that you can basically sell whatever you have whenever you want to any other player as a private transaction. There isn't a set amount that you have to sell these things for, it's entirely up to you. Uh, the only thing that you actually can't sell is a property on which you've already bought houses or, hotel or a hotel. So, uh, however, you could potentially sell back all of the uh, buildings that you've built and then sell the property. Uh, finally, I just want to mention bankruptcy. So this is how players are actually eliminated from the game. So you're declared bankrupt if you owe more than you can actually pay to either another player or the bank. If you owe the money to another player, you must immediately turn over everything that you do have of value. This is, you know, cash and properties. And uh, it, it all goes to that player and you immediately lose the game. You're out. In the event, however, that you owe the bank instead of another player, uh, then you have to turn over all assets to the bank. So in this case, the bank immediately sells everything that you that you have, and uh, it all goes back into the, the cash. And this is actually essentially how the game is won. So the game is won whenever every player except for one is bankrupt. The last player standing wins, I guess. So now we can start playing this literary masterpiece. So Jason, since he rolled the highest, uh, we have arbitrarily discerned that he's going to be the one that's going to be going first. So Jason, take it away. Yay. Here's your dice. All right. So I roll the dice. I get a three. One, two, three. And I land on the swamp at Dagobah. So again, I can choose to either purchase this immediately or auction it off. I am going to choose to purchase it because it's only $60. And you'd be crazy not to. That is a steal for some prime swamp uh, land. Yeah, I can't wait to start building hotels on Dagobah. So, so $60 goes to the bank, and I immediately get the deed for the swamp. While he collects that, I'm going to take my turn. I roll a seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
seven. Advance to nearest starship and pay owner twice the rental to which he slash she is entitled. If starship is unowned, you may buy it from the bank. <whistles> Alright, so this is the Millennium Falcon, and I am going to buy it from the bank. So that's 200, and I get the Millennium Falcon. There you go. It's now Jason's turn. Yay. Indoor Ewok Village, eh? Hmm. Now comes the part of, uh, of the game where you can start to be strategic. Do I want Ewok Village? I don't know. I've already got a lot of high tier properties. And I have the potential to end up possibly picking up these. However, if I get the Ewok Village, I basically don't have, have any chance of actually picking up any of the high tier properties like Corpscon. Or in, of course, got there. Uh, I think I'm actually going to pass on Ewok Village. All right. So in that event, we actually have to auction it off. Okay. So I would like to start the bidding at ten dollars. I bid uh, fifty dollars. Uh, sixty. A hundred. Hundred and twenty. Hundred and twenty-five. Hundred thirty. Hundred thirty-five. Hundred fifty. I'll pass. All right, so I pay 150 bucks to the bank, and I get the Ewok Village. And now I get to roll. Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah, you missed my throne room. So I'll take back stuff for you. No, no, I'm 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 good with the central core. Uh, I think I will buy that, because you have to be crazy not to buy things that you can afford. And unfortunately I'm out of hundreds, so I'll have to get some change back. So, Jason will pick up his central core. I'll make my move. Alright, I'm going again. Ten! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Reactor core. Also, it's very important that you slam your piece down as hard as I'm doing. That's the realism. You get extra points if you put a dent in the board. Actually, yeah. So, 150, one reactor core, please. Here you go. Thank you. My turn. I roll a seven, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, I have pass go, so I get $200. And I get to draw a card, which is so much fun. You are assessed for vaporator repairs. And I have to pay $40 per city or $115 per spaceport. So I'll pay all of my $0. <laughs> all right, roll. 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You are summoned to Coscant Imperial Palace. Sweet. I'm gonna buy that. No. Oh. So for 400 clams uh, credits, that's the colloquial term for clam for credits, obviously. I am going to take. Coruscant Imperial Palace. And you get to roll again. You get the doubles. Since I got doubles, I also get to go again. Oh, look at that! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I rolled doubles yet again. I passed go yet again, lapping Jason entirely. And I landed on another property. Um, yeah, I'll buy that for 120. So I'm using my five here, fives here for 20s, but I got enough of them to spare. And you have to roll again. We might get to see jail. Oh god, hope not. not. I don't want to go to jail. They'll eat me alive in there. <coughs> That's five, by the way. <laughs> yes, thank you. One, two, three, four, five. Um... 
Yeah, I'll buy that. This is the Liars Homestead for 160. All right, so now I finally get to go. Okay, well, that is actually double ones. Ha! Luck is with me, Jason. Give me Park Place. Wait a minute. It's not in here. Oh, I guess it must have gotten lost at some point. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. But I was going to have a full set. Oh, well, well, we'll just say that you have it. I mean, you know, I'm sure it'll turn up somewhere. So that was Monopoly. Kenny, what do you think? I bet you guys uh, thought that we were going to do something crazy during Monopoly. That, uh, you know, one of us would freak out or something insane like that. Seeing so we're pretty much at the end of the season. But, uh, no, I mean, we're just, you know, we're just showing how Monopoly works. It's all good. It's a friendly game. It can be taken seriously. Yeah, we probably won't even have a season finale this year. I mean, yeah, probably not. You know, we'll why, probably just be done now. Wait, why, why would we bother with anything like that? Well, I mean, like, I'm not uh, eternally mad at Jason anymore, because I, I forgave him already way back when, when. And you forgive me too, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So mm. nothing bad will ever happen again. Nope. Anywho, so Monopoly. Yes. Uh, well, Monopoly is, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we do have a lot to owe to Monopoly for modern games. But it's very far past its prime. In its time, I'm sure this game was actually uh, fairly revolutionary. I'm sure that uh, there are mechanics where... Uh, I, I believe I read something where, like, going around the board, like, in rotating... Rather than just getting to the end of the game and winning, or, or ending the game. I believe that Monopoly was one of the first games to actually do that, if not the first. Uh, and it seems like a simple mechanic, but it's actually something that is that, that is attributed to Monopoly and among other games as well. But, yeah, again, it is past its prime. It's not really that great a game. Um, and we apologize that the Star Wars Monopoly was the only one we had access to. Uh, quite frankly, I can't even remember the last time I even owned a copy of Monopoly. I'm pretty, pretty sure it was like the Canadian Monopoly one. Well, and all, all I know is that we definitely weren't going to pay 20 bucks just for... Monopoly. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was kind of thinking about picking up, like, a, a nice, like, cool copy of it as a gag for you, Jason, but uh, I figured that this is more than acceptable. I mean, we always uh, sat and laughed at it on the shelf, and <laughs> I'm sure you even forgot it was there half the time. All right, Jason, what do you think? Uh, honestly, uh, well, I mean, you know what? First off, I do realize that this was kind of the... the uh, great, 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 great grandfather of modern board gaming. I mean, it's it's one of the pivotal things, and you know, with without it, we might not have gotten to uh, where we are currently in board games. I hear a bug coming up. But that said, it kind of uh, it's dated at this point. I mean, th this is like essentially over a century old, uh, and it yeah. just it, it doesn't really stand the test of time. Back in its day, it might have been fun. Now it's just not compared to anything else. So, uh, I, I'm not a fan. Uh, I, I respect you, those of you who actually enjoy this game, but I do not. You mean that the roll and move mechanic isn't something that you just go bonkers for? Would it help if I, if I introduce the character cards back in? That, that might be an alternate rules we'll, uh, we'll, we'll put in later. I also have character cards for like the thimble and the shoe and the race car and... So Kenny, what would you rate Monopoly? Uh... I don't know. I kind of feel bad giving the game a little bit more than Clue, but I kind of feel like this game does have a little bit more substance than Clue does. Uh, Clue is kind of, kind of a different uh, category of games, but it's still along the same lines of uh, very simple, uh, family-esque kind of games. Uh, one thing that's nice about Clue is a game ends very quickly. Monopoly does not, but sometimes that's actually kind of, uh, kind of fun too. I don't know. I think I'll give Monopoly a 3 out of 5. So it's still, I guess, above average? I don't know. It it's kind of feels weird even saying that, but it's still... I don't, I don't think I would be playing this regularly, but I, I could see myself playing this again, I guess, at some point. I don't know. Jason, what do you think? What, what would you give this? I'm going to give this a negative one out of five. Can you do that? Remember, we checked the bylaws when Becky gave Clue a million. I'm just going to double check something. Huh. 
You really think we would have changed this by now, but um, I guess there's something in the bylaws that says that uh, the only way we can change the bylaws is by getting the king of Uruguay to sign off on this. Does Uruguay even have a king? I don't know. I don't think they do. I, I don't even know what we were thinking when we wrote these. Yeah, we're not very good at writing bylaws, are we? No. Jesus. We should make a bylaw about that. Yeah, we should have that in the bylaws. Mm hmm Is it okay to add without changing? So I guess that gives us a grand total of 2 out of 10 maples? Mm-hmm. That's fair. Yeah. Anyway, that's it for this episode, and that's pretty much it for this season. So join us next season. See you next season, and in the meantime, have good games! Ia, Ia, Cthulhu for talking! Ia, Ia, relay! It's a, oh, it's Lampy. Wait a minute, lamps can't move. What's going on over here? Come on, Lampy, it's time for bed. Good lamps don't stay up this late. Oh, Jason, you're here. And you're playing some sort of Yule pentagram game. Honestly, I thought you'd gone home already, and uh, quite frankly, I... Silence! You are too late. You see, I have collected the most evil of game pieces, created my own personal lichdom spell, and now I'm becoming a lich. There's nothing you can do. <laughs> oh, you mean like from Dark from D&D? That's pretty cool, I guess. Yes, yes it is. And now, if you agree to join me in my quest for world domination, I'll even let you live. <sighs> I don't know, man. Seems like a lot of work. I mean, I'm all up for killing all my friends and everything they hold dear over a game of Risk, but, like, this is pretty evil, and I'm really tired. I guess that means I'm gonna have to stop you. Fool, you cannot stop me so long as my phylacteries exist. And now, with my newfound power, I shall spirit them and myself away. I will let you live for now, but soon you will be dead. Man, why does everything evil start in my basement? <laughs>